I am. Uh, okay, now we are going to do a truth table for all of these things. We've symbolized it, symbolized all three premises and the conclusion. So when you're going to do a truth table to test whether an argument is valid, first thing you got to do is write out a truth table with one, two, three premises and the conclusion. So write all of those sentences beside each other. We're going to give each one its own column. We're going to, just like when you're doing a truth table for a single sentence, we're going to look through and see what um, what atomic sentence letters do we have. So basically we're going to get all the atomic sentence letters from our symbolization key. There are three this time, one, two, three, A, G, S. That means we have two to the power of three, that is two times two times two, that is eight rows of our truth table or eight lines. We're going to set things up by filling out on the left hand part of the table, the eight combinations of truth values that each of these things might have. The way we do that, you start with the rightmost one. Usually order these things alphabetically, um, whatever. Uh, start with the rightmost one and alternate TF, 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 all the way down for however many lines you're doing, in this case, eight. Then the next thing over, you do two Ts, two Fs, two Ts, two Fs, again, all the way down. Then the next one over, you go four Ts, four Fs all the way down. If you had more, the next one you'd be doing eight T's, then eight F's, and so on. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we are going to fill out the columns of this truth table, each column. So we're gonna get one column for this sentence, one column for this sentence, one column for this sentence here, and one column for the conclusion. Each column is going to tell us on each of those eight rows of the truth table, whether each of those, oh, sorry, whether the sentence in question, the sentence we're doing the column for, whether it's true or false on each of those rows. That is, row one is telling us, okay, imagine that A is true, G is true, S is true. Well then, is A arrow G true? Then we're gonna have a T or an F here telling us about that. Is S double arrow not A true? Is G double arrow S true? Is G and not A true? Or are they false? And then we'll get a row of four truth values. Something like T, 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 or T, F, T, T, or T, T, F, T, that was four. And then on the next row, we're gonna be asking, well, suppose A is true, G is true, S is false. Then is this true, is this true, is this true, is this true? And that's going to fill out our row here. Okay, so we're going through, think of it this way, the eight different possible ways the world could be, the eight different possibilities here. Each of these rows, with a combination of three T's or F's for each of our three letters is telling us a way the world could be. And we want to check of each of those ways the world could be, is this a way where the premises are true and the conclusion is false? Because remember the definition of validity. An argument is valid if it's not possible to have the premises true and the conclusion false. So I'm gonna check all of these eight possibilities to see are any of those a possibility where I get true premises and a false conclusion. If any of those gives me TTTF for my premises and conclusion, then the argument's invalid. If none of them do, if there is no row where we get TTTF, then I know it's impossible because I've checked all of the eight possibilities. None of them are possibilities where you get TTTF, so it's impossible to get TTTF. Okay. Let's start filling this in. Um, remember the way this is going to go, uh, I'm not going to make multiple videos for the multiple possibilities. Um, I am just going to uh, ask you to pause when we get to certain points and think about what you think the right answer is. And I will take a few seconds before saying what the answer is to give you time to pause and resume. Um, and we'll see what we get. Okay, so I'll start by filling this one in. So the conclusion just says G and not A. Remember the way and works. An and sentence is true just in case both sides of the and are true. So you can usually fill these in pretty quickly. This is saying G and not A. So there's the only rows where this is going to be true are the ones where G is true and not A is true. Not A is true, that means A is false. So I'm going to look for the rows where G is true and A is false. So I'm looking for false here and true here. Where does that happen? That happens just on these two rows. So that means these two rows, rows five and six, are the only ones where this conclusion is going to be true. The rest will be false. So you can fill that in right away. What else have we got? A arrow G. Okay, I'm gonna give you part of the column for that. So when both of them are true, 
A or O G is true. When both of them are false, A or O G is true. That's just from the rule for arrow. I want you to fill in what value we'd get here in spots number one and what value we'd get here in spots number two. Why have I got two things here numbered the same way? Well, these two rows have the same truth values for A and, and G. The only difference between row three and row four has to do with the truth value of S. But there's no S in this sentence, so that can't possibly make a difference. So even if you aren't sure what value, uh, whether you're gonna put true or false in line three, you know that line four is gonna get the same thing. And likewise for five and six. Okay, so pause, take a second, try to figure out what truth values you would put in one and which ones you'd put in two. And I'll give you the answer. Let's see what answer I think it is. I think, so in lines three and four, we get false. Remember, true arrow false, so when A is true and G is false, the antecedent of our conditional is true, the consequent is false. That is the one way to make an arrow sentence false. So lines three and four, those are false because A is true, G is false. A is our antecedent, G is our consequent in this conditional. On the other hand, the lines I've marked two, lines five and six, those are gonna be true. Right. So there we do have one of the sentences true and the other one false, but remember with the arrow, unlike with your other binary connectives, the order matters. So true arrow false, true arrow false, true arrow false is false, but false arrow true, false arrow true is true. Why? Because. There, sorry, I have linked to explanations in other places, but that's just the rule you uh, you need to you need to learn. You need to memorize the rule for arrow. Okay. Here's another column. Um, S if and only if not A. I have filled in some of them for you. I want you to figure out what goes in one, two, three, four. So this is a sentence about S and about not A. It's by conditionaling them. You're going to ignore the G column because we've only got an S and an A in here. So. Take a second, figure it out. You might find it helpful to do a bit of rough work, fill out explicitly the column for not A, right? Write down a column of values here that are, you know, the negation rule applied to A. And then like put your finger on the column that you just wrote for not A, put your finger on the column for S, and read those things off as you go down and say, you know, true if and only if false. False if and only if true or whatever happens to be there and then apply the biconditional rule the if and only if rule to the two things that you have your fingers on and that'll tell you what to write down in this column for the main connective of the sentence the biconditional okay i'll stop talking you pause and i'll show you the answers pause okay my instincts as a lecturer want me to pause like for a long time and put a timer so that um, i give you enough time but you can pause you're in control Let's see what answers I gave. So first of all, on this row, we've got, so S is true. So we're doing true if and only if, not A. A is true, so not A is false. So we're doing true if and only if false. That sounds false. Yeah, that's false. Number two, we're doing S, which is false, if and only if not A. A is true, so not A is false. So S is false. We're doing false if and only if false. That's true. Remember the biconditional says, look at the two things on either side of me, are they the same? So true if and only if true is true, false if and only if false is true. It's just if they're different, if only one of them is true. If one's true and one's false, then you get false. Okay, number three. Now S is true, not A. A is false, so not A is true. So we have true if and only if true, that is true. Okay, line four. Now we've got S is false, so false if and only if A is false, so not A is true. So false if and only if true, that is false. Those are different. False if and only if true. False and true are different. There we go. Hey, good, okay. All right, we have three of our, um, three of our four columns complete. Now we just have premise three to do. G if and only if S. So this is the same thing as the conditional last time. Last time was asking our S and not A the same on our row. This time we're asking our G and S the same. 
Again, I've filled out some of them for you. There are four gaps. Take a look, see what you think. Pause. Okay, let's look at the answers. So, G if and only if S. So I'm gonna put my fingers on these two things and say F if and only if T. Are those the same? No, they are different, so false. Now, F if and only if F. Are those the same? Yes, they are. True. True if and only if true. Those are the same. True. T if and only if F. Not the same, so false. And hey, look at that, we're done. Okay, we have completed the truth table. Now, if you had a question on the midterm or on the exam that says, here is an argument, complete its truth table, is it valid? You would not be done yet because of that question, is it valid? That means you have to tell me, is this valid or not? I might be able to look at the truth table and say, oh, I can see whether this is valid or not. You've given me enough information to figure out whether it's valid, but I need to know that you know so you have to actually write the word valid or write the word invalid or like beside the, the question, is this valid, write yes or no. So let's check. Okay, remember the truth table test for validity. It says, check each row. So we're looking horizontally here and we're looking for a certain combination. We want to see, is there a combination where I get T, 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 F. So each row, all I'm checking is, does this fit the pattern T, 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 F? This one does not because it's T, F, T, F, but I'm interested in T, 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 F. Premise is true, conclusion false, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, this one, it does have a false conclusion, but again, there's a false premise. I'm looking for true premises and a false conclusion. False premises, again, there's a false premise. Uh, this time we have true premises, but it still doesn't fit the pattern because the conclusion is true. Okay, here, false premises again, False premise, false premise. Okay, none of the rows have TTTF. That means the argument is valid. So I should write in here, valid. And then I get full marks. By the way, I just want to reiterate this. The, in order to show that it's valid, you have to look at every single line. There's no one line you can find that shows the thing is valid. Sometimes students will say, um, oh, it's valid because of this line. Look, everything's true in this possibility. That's not what matters. The only kind of horizontal row that matters when you're testing for validity is TTTF, right? The possibility of having true premises and a true conclusion, totally irrelevant. What matters is, is it possible to have true premises and false conclusion, right? It is possible to have an argument where you get a truth table where you have a row like this, but you also have a row where you have TTTF. In that case, the argument is invalid. This row does not help. That doesn't tell you anything nice. What I want here is not the presence of a row like this, but the absence of a bad row where you have TTTF. That's what makes the argument valid. Okay, that's it for this argument. We have another one after that. I am going to take a break and eat some food because otherwise my stomach's going to gurgle on camera. But we'll come back. We're going to do another one where we uh, start with the argument in English, we'll symbolize it in TFL, we'll do a truth table test, check whether it's valid. That'll be the end. See you in a minute.